Shalom Aleichem. Thank you, Yonatan Shai, for this awesome opportunity to give the Torah to our, our friends. Um, Ashreinu, that we're part of a great yeshiva. And Ashreichem, that you're taking time either from your busy schedule or even just free time to listen to some words of Torah. So, here we go. The... Oh, this, <laughs> this idea is bischus, the fact that my wife's due date is actually today. And by the time this video is played, I will probably already be a father, so hooray. And, and here we go. Now I want to talk about the idea of response, take responsibility for other people. The Pasuk says, Hashem said to Moshe saying, or say to the Kohanim, the children of Aaron, you should say to them that they shouldn't become tame to a person in their nation. Nation. So, the Pasuk simply is talking about the mitzvah or the isur to become, for a kohen to become tame or to come in contact with Tumas Meis, right? A corpse or a dead body. Um, those laws are intricate in detail. We're not, that's not the goal of this, of this topic, of this Dvar Torah. But I do want to focus on a superfluous point that comes out of this Pasuk, right? The Pasuk says, say to the Kohanim, the children of Aaron, and you should say to them, so, so why is it, why is it that there's this Kohanim and then Bnei Aaron? I know who the Kohanim are. I know who the Bnei Aaron. Why do I have to say both? And why Emor la Kohan, el la Kohanim Bnei Aaron v'martalehim? You should say to them. So Rashi says, what's, why is it superfluous? It's superfluous to teach us that not only are the Gedolim obligated in a mitzvah. In other words, are people who are ben mitzvah, right, thirteen, obligated to keep the command of not becoming tame to a dead body. But additionally, that the Gedolim are obligated to make sure that the Ketanim, children, do not do Isurim, this one being the example, do Isurim, etc. And the Gemara Nivamos almost explains this in depth. I ain't shown if anyone's interested. The Gemara is Daf Kuf Yud Dalid Amar Aleph. Check it out over there, where again it goes in depth into what it means, halachically speaking, that a Gadol is obligated to make sure that a Katan is keeping the mitzvahs. But I want to bring out a, a deeper point, perhaps. A life lesson, as it were. The idea is, in general, or we find ourselves in general, where we are the gadol in a situation. And, and I'm not saying that from a place of haughtiness or, or arrogance, but the reality is, is that we are the more mature adult. In multiple situations throughout life, sometimes the, 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 the irony is that we are also the cut in many event in many situations. But oftentimes, especially those who are you know listening to this video, trying to learn Torah, we find ourselves to be the gadol in a certain situation. And there are many katanim around us, right? There's many people who aren't living up to, unfortunately, um, they aren't living up to Torah values or they aren't even just simply acting like mature adults. And the question is, what should our reaction be, right? What should our response be? How should we look at it? So there's a classic example, I think, I, when, I, when I read this Pasuk, when I thought of this idea of Rav Salvechik and Kol Dodi Dofek. Rav Salvechik says, in Kol Dodi Dofek, that many Torah Jews bemoan the fact that Israel is in a Torah state, right? That it doesn't represent Torah values, that there isn't enough Torah Judaism going on in the, in, in the state of Israel. And besides, uh, you know, we can, we can rehash the discussion about the fact that, that the state of Israel is the greatest um, benefactor towards yeshivas in the entire world, or that ever was, uh, probably. But, but that's not what Rav says. Rav says like this. Of course, there could be more Torah in Israel. Of course, the state of Israel could be a greater representation of Torah values. But the question isn't, oh my gosh, look how bad it is, right? That's not, what, that's not supposed to be the response. The response isn't supposed to be to sit on the side and bemoan it. The response is supposed to be, from a Torah perspective, what can we do about it, right? How many religious Jews in America, for example, or in Chutzarts in general, I happen to be in America, in Chutzarts in general, what are we doing about it, right? Even the Jews, and who am I to, to, um, to call out the Jews in Israel, because, you know, I'm the one in Chutzlaretz. But nonetheless, what are the Jews in Eretz Israel doing, those who are complaining like this, what are you guys doing to make it a more, a, a state that represents Torah more, right? Instead of just bemoaning it, what can we do, right? Like Rav Cook says about Sipi Sel Yoshua. Like Marsh in Shabbos says famously that we're going to be asked a number of questions when we come to when we come to um, the base in Shalmala after, our, after 120. And one of those questions is, did you hope for Mashiach? So Rav Cook says, it's not just hope. Hope is beautiful, but it's not just hope. See, Bisa Yeshua means, what are you doing to cause Mashiach to come? And what are you doing that will affect change that will eventually lead to the coming of Mashiach?
It's very nice that we hope. It's very nice that we that anima vemudah shleiva v'yas mashiach. But what are we doing? How can we how can we affect change? And the reality is, to bring it home a little bit, the reality is, lahazir hagdolim al ketanim. We would never expect a two year old to understand why the house should be clean, right? We might be able to train a two year old, and eventually they'll be able to understand. But but they'll never fully understand it. And when we come home from work or from out, whatever, and the child has played with all of his toys and his room or the dining room, the living room, wherever he plays, it's a mess. You don't just sit on the side and be moaning if I, oh, how come my kids, my two-year-old child doesn't get, the, doesn't get it? How come my, his room is always a mess? How come his toys are always, he never picks up his toys? You would never do that, right? The Torah is teaching, those who are more mature, those who are more in tune, with, with objective reality, right? Objective truth, the house should be clean, are meant to teach and to take responsibility for those who don't understand, right? For the child who doesn't get it. And the tr- then it's the same here, right? In, in the state of Israel or in any situation, you find yourself in a minyan and there's a bunch of people who aren't interested in davening. So we can sit on the side of a moment or we could say, okay, how can I take responsibility for the situation? Even if I can't necessarily affect change, is there any small action that I could do that maybe could affect it? Or even, I don't know if I will affect change, but maybe I could try. Maybe there's something I could do. Everyone on their own level. So I'll end with a very powerful harif, I would even call it, Gemara, that appears in Shabbat. The Gemara says that right before the Churban Beit HaMikdash, right before Hashem said He's going to destroy the Beit HaMikdash, He had a conversation with Gabriel. And he said, Gabriel, I want you to wipe out all the sinners of Israel, but keep alive my holy ones and draw a tav on their head, a tav on their head. And Midat Adin, right? He gets up and he says, what's the difference? What's the difference between the two of them? And Hashem says, well, the tav is a representation of the fact that these Jews kept the Torah, they're my holy ones. You shouldn't wipe them out. Why would we wipe them out? They're holy. And Amida Sadin says, yeah, but they could have, they could have been mochet. They could have stood up and said, you guys are acting in a terrible way. You're breaking society. You're, you're acting against the word of Hashem, the Ratzon Hashem. And, and Hashem says, but I testify. Could you imagine Hashem himself, the one who knows everything, who created the world from the beginning till the end. He says, I testify that had they done and had they even tried to be mochet, had they tried to stop the people that, they, that, that, that were living in that generation, they would not have been successful. I testify that. And therefore, they shouldn't be punished. Mira Sadin says, it's very nice, Hashem, that you know that, the creator of the world. But did they know that? And Hashem says, because of that argument, the Mikudashai Tatchilu. Start with my holy ones. Now, that's obviously a very Kharif Gemara, right? That, that essentially God is saying, so it's the holy ones' fault for what the Rishayim are doing. That's obviously a very Kharif Gemara. And, you know, we have to take it on our level. The lesson, bottom line, for us to take away from this idea, I hope, is that in every, in every aspect of life and wherever we find ourselves, we, should, we shouldn't be someone who's a bystander. We shouldn't be someone who's sitting on the side. In every situation in life, again, in our level, in our own way, we should ask ourselves, how can I take responsibility of the situation? How can I improve those who just don't necessarily understand? I do understand. Great. What can I do to help the people around me? Shabbat. Thank you.